Hey everyone, it's me, Patch Damn Bogad. I'm here just showing off my altar. Um, I have it right in front of me. I know it's kind of uncomfortable for myself, but I'm here and I wanted to show off what I have. Like for example, these are the candles that I have when I actually want to do something ritualistic. I have about two of them. And here's the other one over here, you know, same one. But um, this is the, the altar that I have when I want to do my rituals, like I said. Within this um, patchet, this um, little bag here, rather, I said patchet, didn't I? Uh, I meant bag. Um, it's of uh, very nice material, like a suede, but it has a lot of rune stones. And maybe I could just kind of um, open it up. Now, as that's trying to be, you know, uh, done, as I try to open up these little, this bag here with the rune stones. Okay, here's one. Here's one. There we go. You know, these are very Norse related rune stones that are actually kind of badass that um, I use for any sort of particular magic spell that I need. Um, of course, major religions hate it. They detest it. But it's actually good for um, black magic if that's the thing that you want to do. And of course, the one and only Baphomet statue, which is just so amazing. I mean, um, not that you have to get it, but anyone that actually sees himself as a particular um, person that walks a left-hand path, you have at least a statue or a t-shirt or even a drawing of one. These are my um, crystals that I have, you know. I know it's very new age of me, but I have it. And it's here so that I can actually channel a lot of the energy that is needed uh, throughout ritual, throughout my day. They're really nice, you know. Oh, I dropped one, but uh, that it's okay. But this is my little uh, crystals here that I have. Um, let me just put this back. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you, friends, in this new video, because it helps me to appreciate the things I do for Satan um, when it comes to being ritualistic, when it comes down to you know being very serious and. That's exactly how I see rituals. I mean, we all have our own take on it. But with me, when I think about my rituals, I think about my rituals in such a way where when I approach Satan, to me, that has to be, like, really, really important. Um, it's, it's, I'm not saying, like, if I'm using telepathy and um, I have a psychic connection with Satan, that's less important. I'm not saying that. It's just that you know the importance if you were to dress up for let's say a wedding or a get together or whatever have you, you dress a certain way to show your appreciation and the respect. Well, that's how I see rituals. You know, um, I mean, <laughs> like everyone else, well, at least, you know, the way I'm thinking, how I go about my rituals, I tend to go um, to wanna, um, I can't really think about uh, the whole uh, format of my, um, home at the moment but I turn the lights off and then from there um, I begin my rituals I don't know if that's what you do but when I turn my lights off and I have those candles that I showed you burning and I have this right here you know right here on my altar um, this to me is the most important thing because as I have my Baphomet statue you know, my spirit guide, if you will. I know it's very new age, but my guardian demon, if you will. Satan, it just makes me feel a lot more comfortable when I do my rituals because that's my guardian. And that's who I go through when I speak to any spirit. You know, any spirit being. Because people say you need to know um, warding off like uh, rituals. Like, in, in other words, if you were to do a ritual and you were to call in something within your physical space your realm and it's masquerading as a um, let's say Satan well then how would you know well that's the point of me actually going through Satan because that's my take on it you know um, my take on it is once you know your spiritual guide um, they're there to protect you and obviously if you go through your spirit guide and you tend to make contact with these daemons or 
what's masquerading as um, these daemons, it's good to go through whatever spirit guide that you have because that's what they're there for, to protect you. You know, and that's what's going to save you. Now, of course, there's tons of, um, you know, rituals that uh, you could basically um, ascertain on the internet. And they could pretty much assist you on how you're able to ward off these spirits, especially those astral parasites. Because, um, thankfully, I haven't had an experience where an astral parasite came to me. But a lot of the key things that astral parasites do is if you have no gnosis of where your, I don't know, the negativity is coming from. And I mean, you don't know where your negativity is coming from. Suicide, you hate yourself, you hate your mom, your cat, your dog, whatever. It doesn't matter. You don't know where it's coming from, but you end up, you know, um, just feeling that way. Well, that's a good indication that you're dealing with the astral parasite because that's something that the Goetia would not do. They will not uh, give you negative prophecy. They will not um, encourage you to do something that's quite harmful. That's just not how they do things. Um, but when I think about... Satan and what he's done for me. I never once had a, an an altercation because even when I spoke through all of the Galatia in one setting. No, when I mean one setting, I'm not saying I summon you through the name of Satan, all of the Galatia. No, that's every single one drawing out all of their sigils by taking my time, their energy, by summoning each and every one of them. And God damn it, I gotta tell you, it took a long time to do that. It's like even before the day that I prepared that ritual, it took a day within itself to draw all 72 rituals. Oh, excuse me, it's all 72 rituals, didn't I? All 72 sigils. <laughs> all 72 rit um, sigils. And I did that. And, you know, as an artist, it's okay for me. And I love doing what I do, so it was a good thing. But when I did that, Man, I kid you not, when I did that ritual, right? Oh my goodness, I'm talking about, I had to spend at least two hours plus. So imagine you standing up, because I like to do my um, ritual standing up. It's all dark, all lights are off. And um, I'm just completely honest and open. You know what I mean? And I'm just showing myself to Satan and, you know, the day I'm on showing that I'm very sincere. You know, and, you know, out of respect, I take my bath if I have to um, because I want to come off clean. I want to come off as if I respect what I do. That's how I do my rituals. And as I do that, um, Satan, he pretty much, he, he appreciates what, what I do. Hell, um, even after I take my bath, um, I know other people, um, they would wear their um, the color black or a special robe. And that's cool and all. Me, I wear nothing. <laughs> I'm serious, I wear nothing Because it's something very symbolic For me from wearing nothing And to explain that um, I'm sorry if that's too much information But then again, it's I'm not sorry Because of the fact that that is what I do And the reason being is that When I come to meet this individual um, I want to be completely Honest and open In a good way that I can metaphorically Figuratively, symbolically Spiritually show him that I am completely open is that I have nothing to hide. So I'm wearing nothing when I do that ritual because it shows, like, obviously you're naked. You're, you have nothing to hide. So even if I feel embarrassed that I want to say something, I say it anyway because that's what that means to me. That's why instead of wearing um, a traditional robe or the color of black, dude, I'm just, you know, I'm just full commando <laughs> I'm, I'm full commando and you know I never had a problem um, I always have really good results with that I'm not saying for you to do that but I'm simply saying that um, that's something that benefits me but if you go ahead and do it dude go ahead <laughs> you know what I mean because it's just something that symbolically it figuratively, it figuratively uh, shows the daemon that you're being very honest I have nothing to hide and as I speak to you, it just shows how important it is. You know what I mean? It is just the God honest naked truth. <laughs> you know, it's just the truth. And that's how I I go about it because I'm that serious about 
uh, my spirituality and how I approach it. We all have, um, you know, our little um, tinge of differences, artistic way of doing it. But that's just my way, you know. And um, I just thought that um, I should make that video to um, help encourage those. Like when you see um, an altar like that, um, it doesn't have to be expensive. Like for example, mine's uh, mine was a little pricey, but it doesn't have to be for you. You could just um, go to like Home Depot and you can make yours yourself. Satan does not discriminate. And I have something to say about that. I remember about, <clears throat> had to been the beginning of my left-hand path, my journey. Um, I went to this website. I was conflicted by it. So 50-50, right? I was conflicted by it. And when I've read the material, the individual helped me to appreciate at that time that he would take a piece of chicken, a fried chicken, whatever, and he'll place it outside his window and that to him was his offering or his things his gratitude for satan and at that particular time i'm saying to myself like you know again i, I was conflicted but it only made a lot more sense on where i'm at now you know progressively of course but where i'm at now so my point is if you remain creative you remain artistic and you try to spice up your rituals and you do it with the intent of being respectful, you know, Satan will accept that. The demons will accept that. Otherwise, they'll tell you what they accept. Either it be jewelry, it will be artwork, publicity, like I'm doing now on YouTube. Satan requested for me to do exactly this, to show all the good things and the teachings, the lessons that he has done for me so I could tell you guys, you know. It's, it, it's, it's pretty much how you learn. And... It's just that the only difference between yourself and I, friends, is just the fact that um, I just have a platform. You know, um, it would be too naive if I say anyone could do this. I mean, there's truth to that, but not anyone. Because the reason being is the fact that that's how you separate the charlatans from those who are um, real. You know what I mean? Because it's like those... Who are charlatans they would give such false information and it, it's just like you have people that don't know a lot about the Goetia and they end up falling for it and sadly they just end up you know meeting ruin or they be you know this destroyed by the information and that's not what I'm about I really want to give that good information I want to show off my altar my crystals my candles my rune stone my baphomet statue and I just want to show that off because hell it's something that really made me feel um though they're props um that I am actually going you know moving closer and closer to Satan now another thing I want to show you is this is my first black book you know this is my first black book um, this is the one that I had that Satan has personally given me. And what I mean by personally given to me, it's not that it materialized out of nowhere. Even though Satan has given me stuff that um, came out of thin air. So screw that, you know, uh, what is it? The new age mumbo jumbo that demons do not use synchronicities or, um, you know, things of that nature that they can't do stuff out of thin air because it does happen. It's just that... We close our minds to it and we haven't seen it but i've personally experienced it because i kid you not uh, it could be in a different video of, of, as far as like ex experiences and stuff like that and i can share that with you guys but for right now this is um the first black book that i, I had with satan that what he did was that he helped me <laughs> in the very beginning to get to know who he is because obviously i'm on a journey so therefore i had a long road ahead of me in what he had to teach me and interestingly the first thing that I've written down in Satan is not that you're gonna see it fully but there's writing here that helps you to appreciate on how I met Satan do lucid dreaming and that's important to me at that time as it is now because with that writing um, you know it helped me to appreciate like by looking at my lucid dreaming, um, it has a lot of importance to it, a lot of symbology to it. And I did my research to the internet. Like, for example, with that first writing, um, it was speaking about 
how I met Satan and he was I was at a precipice so think of it as you looking upon yourself in your um, dream and looking at myself I'm looking at the distance and as I look at the distance I kid you not I kid you fucking not Satan was as big as a mountain or bigger than a, um, a mountain but in the form of a dragon a seven headed red colored dragon like in the book of Revelation so even though um, I was out of uh, Christianity for you know some time at that uh, particular um, infantile state spiritually within the left hand path um, it taught me a good lesson that demons take the form of what you see them as so being the fact that when I was a Christian I tend to see Satan as well exactly that a red-headed dragon of, of seven heads because of the book of Revelation but when I had that dream and I've written it down in my black book, amongst other stuff I've written down in my black book, it doesn't escape me even today. I mean, I'm, I'm just completely taken back by that particular um, lucid dream. I mean, it was right there in front of me, that dragon. I mean, he was as big as a, a mountain. He was came to me as just think about just humongous. You know, I, I can't really just... It's like the more I, I explain it, I feel I'll just botch it. But just think about humongous. And his head was just humongous. And I remember specifically writing down my um, black book. I put up my left hand, placed it on his left nostril. And I kid you not, that dream was like 4K. So in other words, I felt his scales, that reptilian, that serpentine feeling. And I felt the smoothness and also the 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 rigidness when you rub it in the opposite direction and then next um i saw his eye his left eye was as oh my goodness it was just humongous it was very serpentine like and i wasn't scared i i was just more in awe it's like if you go because i love anime right it's like if you were to go to a comic con um convention or you see someone famous and you're just nerdy it up you're just complete nerd mode and that's how i was so i can only imagine at that particular time that though satan is figuratively helping me to up understand through my perception of the spiritual world and of satan this is who he is i'm more than sure that he was just having a ball um just being laughing hysterically because instead of me running in the opposite direction i was just saying like dude this is just far out this is amazing i've never had such lucid dreamings before but if I had, I just don't remember it as much. But this was far out. And I was like, this is amazing. And that's, you know, um, just a little tidbit of what that um, first black book, that first journal, um, you know, contained. You know, the information therein. You know, it was something that I completely enjoyed. So I've written that down. And, of course, here I am able to express myself through that experience so you guys could appreciate um, you know, collectively, um, and by choice, not that you have to believe me, but that's what happened to me in my personal journey, but it's my personal life and it is what I believe. So, you know, it's something that I definitely do hold as truth because it was so monumental. Otherwise I wouldn't spend close to a thousand dollars on YouTube equipment to say stuff that I'm just, you know, don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, again, you still have people that want to argue with that too. Now, lastly, this is my other thing that I wanted to share with you. This is my leather bind book. It's my second um, black book or black journal. Pretty neat, isn't it? I, I like the, um, you know, this right here. It's really, really cool. You know, and then I have the two dragons. The two dragons are very important to me. It's symbolic. That's why I had to pick this up because... The bigger dragon represented seven, uh, Satan, even though it doesn't have seven heads, but it still makes the point. The one that's slightly smaller is myself, because um, when I started to grow uh, into Satanism, into the left-hand path, Satan started to help me to appreciate that we are a lot alike. And by him doing so, he helped me to appreciate like my higher self, though there's different versions of it, but the... The first one I came into contact with, and this is through Satan's mouth himself, and he verifies this personally, that I am also a red dragon, 
Now, at that time, I didn't know much about Dragon, so of course, it's always highly, um, let's say, um, suggested. Right? I don't know why it took me that long to think of that word, but it's highly suggested for anyone. If you don't understand your lucid dreams or the uh, characters they're in, try to take note and write down what those um what was in that dream just like with my first red um my first um black book my black journal because you have to write down everything within that particular um book and why is that well you're going to start to realize that as you basically look at that particular dream that you've written down in detail it is going to benefit you it's going to benefit you to the t now why is that well think about it when satan told me that i was a red colored dragon just like him i thought it was interesting that he specified red colored dragon and i saw it in that vision or also within my um dream that i was a red colored dragon because if you look at a red colored dragon not only does it represent treasure and stuff like that but it represents passion you get, what, you get what I'm trying to say? It represents passion. And it just took it just took a lot of life experiences and events to fall into place where it just dawned on me. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm a red dragon. I have to control that idiotic nature of mine. Because if you just act for the sake of acting based off of your emotions, then you're going to be completely... Um, messed up because you're gonna look stupid in the very end of the matter you see so that's the problem with being too passionate but if you could try not to be too passionate or use your passion in an effective way you look at a situation like this like with these two dragons no wonder in my experience um satan and i we go hand in hand together why is that well it's because we're the same in the sense where we have a lot in common as far as um, interest, as far as me trying to further his message. Why? Well, because I believe in him. I mean, he didn't just come to my lucid dream for no reason. I didn't just come to him for no reason. It's, it's because like attracts like. But with that said and done, that's just me really trying to explain the premises of why I purchased this book. Um, I believe I got it from ecstasy.com. This one was actually given to me by a friend. Um, that one was interesting because I remember when I first started out in Satanism, um, I asked Satan, you know, where am I going to get a black book? And I didn't think, like, it was enough for me to go to, like, um, a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or things like that. But if for those who don't understand what those stores are, there really are just, like, chain... Um, how can I put this? They're like chain stores that um, we have, you know, all, all, all over the place in New York City. Um, I'm not too sure who's watching. I'm just trying to specify what a Walgreens are or what's a Rite Aid, just in case you don't know what it is. But there's nothing wrong with those stores. It's just the fact that I didn't feel comfortable getting a black book from there because I wanted it to be special. So Satan came out of nowhere and he actually gave me this book due to um, a friend and that's not a coincidence he was just like you know your friend is going to give you a, a black book and i'm just brushing it off as well ah, it's just my thoughts you know how it is when you're first starting out you can't really discern between your thoughts and that of the daemon and sure enough the friend just gave it to me and i was like oh shit <laughs> but <laughs> but that's just my, my my personal experience and i thought that was just far out but this one i'm you know i've been holding this up for a while but with this one this is a very interesting black book. It's a very good journal because within this, not only does it have a very nice latch to open and close, but um, it has deep down inside a lot of the information that I have I kind of dropped it a little bit. Didn't expect that to happen. But I have nothing but sigils in them. You know, as you see, this one is Lucifer. I'm going to show you a couple others. Uh, I have... Um, Aunt Taratu from um, Become a Living God. Um, I thought uh, he's really good to uh, work with Aunt Taratu. And then we have so uh, we have so much. I'm gonna show you one more. Uh, let me see if I could just look through it right away. 
And the reason why I'm flipping too long is because uh, some of these names are like so difficult to basically um, pronounce. Okay, here's one that we all know, but we shouldn't really think about the movie of The Conjuring because it's... It's not a good representation of Volak, but here's Volak's sigil, right? And I've written that down in my black book. And that one was really nice because not only did I, um, I put a spell on myself. And what that means is what I tried to do is that I tried to convince myself of the manifestation that me and Satan had said that is going to, um take place in the near future and that spell keeps me focused by focusing on that particular manifestation never to give up to get back up um even though like i'm walking this left hand path because it can get very very difficult due to the darkness but i get back up anyway and i'm grateful for that and that's why i pit everything within um these black books because that means a lot to me, and I'm pretty sure you should have uh, that same love with your particular daemon. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. You enjoyed the altar, the crystals, the candles, the Baphomet statue, the little bit of the story of the um, the black book that I have, two of them, because they represented my infantile state of my Satanism, my left-hand path, my journey. Is that even now I just feel so emotional Just like it just wells up in me It bubbles forth It's a good thing I wear any shades Because I'm just like really emotional On how I explain Satan Because I love him guys And I just hope that you guys feel the same way eventually When you develop your um, relationship with him Or any of the Goetia So I love you guys Check back with me And just hold on tight I have much more videos to um, dish out so that, guys, um, you could have just appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See ya.